old battery ran out there, but it, anyway, I uh, finished milling this off and got to checking it with my square and my dial indicator. And while I got a decent finish on here, I'm dissatisfied with the results. I was getting like 2,000s variance top to bottom over it. Uh, indicating it off the mills is probably really worse in the actuality. And this is a learning project. Uh, it's as much about me figuring this machine out as it is getting this part done. So I've changed out to a high speed steel, really sharp end mill that is smaller in diameter because I think the, the point of bar I never did fix on this machine. I'm thinking that the sweep uh, has some angle to it. So if there's lead and fall for the cutter. So it only likes to cut with the table feeding that way. It does really good. Feeding back the other way, not so great. Uh, had to tighten up the table gives. I've got a half thou play when I pry it now on each end. Uh, this one end was about two thou play. Uh, this was not showing up previously when I didn't have the weight on the table. Now I got the weight kind of on one side of the way. The screw, how much axis is going direction, cocks the thing. So it's showing up in the face. Uh, you might be able to see this line here where I fed in from that side and went down this way. And I can actually feel that with my finger. It's, I mean, it's, it's not probably over a thousand. But uh, for this job, I'd like to have better than that. So I'm gonna try and give it one more time over on this and we'll see how that works out. And then I gotta recheck. I've gone up each side here to clean them up, but uh, my square says that it's out of square with the face. And I don't know if that was because of the gibbs being out of adjustment when I moved this one way or the other, it was caulking. Could have been some of it. And I also don't know if this tool is ground exactly flush. I was getting close to the same error both sides, it appears. I don't really have a good way to measure it, but uh, measuring with my stare. With this here, my square, uh, it's showing out of square over about the foot. It's probably showing three thousandths, something like that. And I think it can do better. So uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get this face good first. Also up the feed rate quite a bit. Uh, I thought I was getting a varnishing effect. I was running way too slow with those carbide inserts on this. That's why it's gotten shiny. You can almost see a reflection in it. But uh, we're going for this dull up here. I ran this and I can't, if I run my fingers over, I can't feel anything, but I can feel some stuff going on here. So let's give it a go.
straight across. zero and minus one for sure. Let's uh, see what it'll hold going down. somewhere between zero and two.
Well, that's got this face done. We're all I'm gonna do to it. I'm satisfied with that. It's probably about as good as I'm gonna get it with my machine I have. Uh, until it gets rebuilt, I'm gonna say that that's as close as I can get. I don't know exactly. I suspect that I moved this out in order to do the measurements on it so it's not sitting in the same place it was on the table. So I suspect that's probably where I'm getting some of this thousandths and a half uh, deviation over this face as it comes down rather than in the column. Uh, it could have been that it just, as everything heated up, as I kept going up, 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 that it grew enough that I lost that thousandths in it. Because this is it's about a 20, 26 inch face. And about 12 inches, 12, 13 wide, roughly a two foot by foot area. So, to mill a two foot by foot area and have it within a foul that's not fly cut is probably decent. Uh, with a fly cutter, they could probably get this better. Maybe. Single point's usually a little more accurate. Uh, it would have been a a lot of stick out to swing that. You're talking over a foot out on the fly cutter. Uh, I would bet that if you fly cut that, uh, it would probably not be that close because it would have so much stick out, the rigidity would be so limited that I think you would get skipping when it came on and off the surface and you would have to do it across one direction in order for the fly cut to get a complete circle anyway because anything that you were out of tram uh, would result in inaccuracies. Uh, so not only do we need to hold flat, but we also need to hold the uh, proper geometry. So a little bit more tricky than just simply shooting for flat because uh, I said fly cutter might could get you there, but getting a fly cutter and having it true be probably a challenge, I would think. I don't think I would go by that method myself, but I'd love to hear what you all think. If you would uh, fly cut this and try and hold a tolerance better than a thou and a half over two foot, I'm sure people with new machines can probably do better, uh, unless it's on, uh, a lot of knee type mills I feel like would struggle with this job. Uh, the amount of weight and tipping it on the table uh, would probably be problematic. Now you can go sideways. Uh, anyway, love to hear your thoughts on uh, the accuracy and what I could do to get this better here. Uh, alternatives. I need to work on tram on this thing and some other stuff. Uh, this project's good, been good for uh, pointing out flaws in the mill and things that I need to address to get this better than it is. Uh, it's, a, it's an old machine and it's had a lot of use so the fact that it is what it is is probably pretty good. Uh, but it's definitely a, a challenge to hold these kind of tight tolerances, or to me they're tight. Or guys like Robin do this job to microns, but uh, I don't have that kind of equipment. And I guess you could you could hand lap it to that. Of course, you, I mean this is going to get scraped. That's not my task for this job. This is a mill challenge, not a scraping challenge. So that's where we're at on this. Is got another side done. And as you saw, when I had this tipped up, it was, uh, when I flipped it, it came up pretty squared. So it was in like a thousandths over this. Uh, it's really as good, it was probably as good as it is now, except all I've done is taken all the scratch and, and divots and flatten this up a little bit. There were some hollows and low spots in there before that have gone away. It's got this cool zebra looking pattern on the front of it too. So that uh, give it some character. 
Oh, if we want to scrape this in or not, I mean, ultimately, it, it's uh, it's not a moving surface. Uh, when it's on the shaper, you set the table height and you cut there. So, uh, as long as it's uh, the table is uh, in line with the ram, that's really all you have to have here. Uh, a super high finish, super flatness on this surface, and not really an important factor because of how the machine operates. It doesn't doesn't go down while it's cutting because it would just go away from the cutter. You can feed up into it if you were trying to cut a slot and perhaps it would be of some value. Although again, the, uh, if it feeds up and it goes in at the same time, it's not really gonna make any difference because the shaper ram's gotta come in and usually it has to go back out on the other end in order for it to cut, you can't just go into a blind hole typically. And if it did, it would just tip in so your blind hole would get less, would get deeper as it went down, which I guess could be problematic. Your, your cutter could hit the end of the bore if it was flat bottom, but I feel like you always need clearance with a shaper and that you couldn't go dead to the bottom of the hole. But maybe I'm wrong about that, so y'all can tell me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.